Yes, now there is nothing pending as, a, as, uh, now as far as salvation is concerned. But we need to understand the saved people are still living in the world. Now which being ruled by the past of darkness, right? We are saved, but still we live in the presence of so many other things. You know, where you see sin, demons, uh, all kind of temptation, this and that. The time is going to come, you're going to be saved from the atmosphere of sin, right? So every day we need to be saved from all the attacks of sin, right? And uh, are we to live a responsible uh, godly life? Now, godliness doesn't come overnight. Godliness is a question of being trained. If you're not trained, you can never be godly. It's not something that happens to you. It's something you develop you know, over a period of time. You now It's a process, right? And uh, that means you have to invest a lot of time in developing a godly attitude, developing your mind, making your mind more like that of Christ Jesus. You know, get your mind renewed by the Word. And... Uh, the kingdom of God is all about working hard. It's not for lazy people. Yes, he did everything for you and me on the cross. He said it is finished. But then, taking what he has done for you and me and move forward, now that's a need of the hour, right? If you don't have a vision for your personal life, then you're going to be knocked down by the enemy. Because when you don't have focus, you'll be roaming around. You do not know your destiny, what you are called for. You know, it's the vision in your life concerning the purpose that God has for you. It does integrate your soul, spirit, body, heart and mind. So without vision, the people perish. You know, not only we are being saved, we need to ask the question, what I'm saved for? Now God doesn't save people just to be like a showcase dolls in the kingdom. Not to live without power, to live without, without an assignment, to live without a purpose. You know, God always... Uh, had a purpose whenever he created something. That's why he said always is good. You follow what I'm saying? He called it good not because it just looked so beautiful. He called it good because it had a purpose. Amen? So, uh, as far as your life is concerned, you have to understand God elected you first and then he created you. Now God you know, conceived you in his heart, in his mind. So you came into the world after, because of God's decision, not because of accident, right? So that's the reason the Bible says in the context that God is called as the father of your spirit. Amen. So when God's going to bring forth something into the world, it is not meant to be a failure. It is meant to be a success. Amen. So you have the element of success within yourself. You have the seed of Greatness within yourself, because your maker is as such. You are being created by a greater God, powerful God, magnificent God. After creating you, called you as good. Does that make sense? So there's, there's no question of defeat in your life. There should be no sense of failure in your life. All that you do is to find out the purpose that God has for you. Once you know the purpose and develop a vision to fulfill that purpose, uh, and accordingly your lifestyle will be Develop day in and day out. Now that's the reason grace is given to you every morning to move towards your destiny. Amen. Amen? So all that you ever need in your life, you know, be it physically, mentally, emotionally, spiritually and financially, in every way possible, God has already provided what do you need. So never ever say that, now I don't have the capacity. Never ever say that I don't have the gifts. The Lord is my shepherd. And I shall not want. It's not only talking about provision. It's talking about the supply to your entire being. Amen? That you have everything you need being supplied by the wine to bear fruit that will last forever. Not only in this life, but for all eternity. The Bible says God did choose you. You did not, you did not choose him, but he chose you. Why? To bear fruit that will remain forever. So we're not doing something only here in this world, always remember, what do you do? It is done for all eternity. Amen? Amen? So you must have the eternity in your heart. That's why the Bible says, fix your eyes on things above. Fix your heart on things above, not on things below. Amen? So you got to have the kingdom of God in your heart, in your mind. 
So do understand that you are a kingdom citizen. Though you live in this world for a time and season, you do not belong to the world. You carry something into the next world. Amen? You are a citizen of heaven. That's why we say we live in the kingdom of God. That means uh, the domain where God himself moves and operates and reigns. So you have the reign of God in your life, in your soul, your spirit, your body, in your marriage, in your family, in your career, in your finance, in your ministry, in all the areas that you find God reigning. There is a throne in your life. The throne has the Son of God. Now ruling from there. Amen? Overruling everything in your life. So I told you so many times, the power of Satan, it is in his suggestion. Lie always comes as suggestions. When you are tempted, you like to give a suggestion to you. You move by what you like to suggest. Always remember, some of the ideas that come into your spirit, you got to diagnose it. And now whether it's going to be from God or it's from the devil. Amen? Don't allow your mind to be a dustbin. Your mind must be renewed by the word. Once your mind is renewed by the word, your mind has the spiritual capacity to analyze, to test and approve everything that comes on your way, whether it is from God or it's from the devil. All right? The devil would like to bring in, uh, bring in something in your life that serves your gratification. So you can gratify yourself immediately. But God always uh, tells you to wait and he always teaches you how to wait upon God. Amen? So I've been talking to you about godly desires and ungodly desires. When you don't have a desire, I mean ungodly desire, the devil has nothing in you. There's no connection. You like to establish the connection, but he doesn't find none. Right? doesn't find anything. Jesus said very clearly, the prince of the world is coming to me and he doesn't have any hold on me. He's looking for some hold, but he cannot find one because I'm smart. Amen? So always remember, you know, anything that's going to come from the world, from the enemy, any kind of ungodly desire which is infused in your heart and your mind, you know, it's going to help Satan to control you. How does he control your life? By implanting ungodly desires in your life. Once the desire is conceived, inevitably by default, what are you going to do? You're going to look for ways and means to gratify the desire. The only desire cannot be made by God. Desires just don't happen. Desires are cultivated. Follow what I'm talking about. Nothing like one fine, fine morning you wake up and you say, oh, no, I want to do this. No, it doesn't happen. It's more like a seed. Every desire has the capacity to grow within you. It's more like a seed. It's implanted. Depending upon where you had been, what you do, you know, what you see, what you hear, you know, who is your friend, what are the places you sit, how do you use your body, your mind, your soul, spirit, all those things that matter the most. Follow what I'm talking about? That's why the Bible says, do not stand in the way of sinners. Why? You can be polluted. You can be defiled. Bad company corrupts good character. There's no way you can be so godly being involved with ungodly people. Tell me a friend, I'll tell you who you are. The Bible wants us saying that a righteous man is cautious about his friendship. Don't call everybody as your friend. Jesus said, you are my friends. Why? There's always a sharing. Friendship will take you always uh, to another level of intimacy and depth in relationship. He said, I call you as friends and not as servants. Why? Because I would like to teach you and unveil everything that I learned from the Father. There's always sharing of ideas. Without common ground, you can never have any friendship. Amen? That's why Amos 3, 3 says, how can two people walk together unless they agree to do so? You follow what I'm saying? So if you want to walk with God, you must have an agreement. If you want to walk with the world, you must have an agreement with the world. Otherwise, it just doesn't happen that easy. 
So desires need to be cultivated. Right? So now, devil doesn't have any power more than what you give him. So when the desire becomes very powerful in your life, only when you take it to another level of something called meditated thought. Like a fish which cannot swim without the water, uh, no desire can ever survive without the thought life, without taking it to, taking to another level of meditated thought. Thought, meditated thought, that gives birth to action, continuous action, then sin. When the sin is fully grown, it gives birth to death, right? Because that becomes your character. Thought, meditated thought, action, continuous action, right? Habit, character, death. David now prays to God, saying, Lord, create in me a clean heart and renew a right spirit within me. Amen? So now the question here is, uh, uh, it's not a question of asking God for forgiveness every time you commit sin. The point here is, uh, am I holy enough to hate those things once I used to like? You're going to feel sorry about it, right? But you must come to the point where you hate those things. All of us uh, have one thing or the other. What we like, what God doesn't like. The things we like, what God doesn't like. The Holy Spirit is grieved. Be it not talking, be it seeing, be it hearing, being, you know, uh, having ungodly friends. Follow what I'm saying? There are certain things in your life that quench the Holy Spirit. He just retreats. You cannot feel him because he has to be away. Because at that moment, in the given time, you're doing things uh, that is anti-God. If anyone loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. Always remember, the communion, the fellowship with the Spirit of God is possible only when you keep in step with the Spirit. There are things uh, that will quench the Spirit of God, that will grieve the heart of God. That's why you need to cultivate a life uh, where you live in harmony with the Holy Spirit, keeping in step with the Spirit. You know exactly, when he's grieved, you know, I'm not doing the right thing, I'm not saying the right thing, I'm not having the right kind of thoughts. Always judge your life by your thoughts. You are nothing more than your thought life. If your thoughts are good, you're going to be a good man, good woman. If your thoughts are evil, then that's how you're going to be. Man looks at the outward appearance, but God looks at your heart. So God always starts working from the inside to the outside. Amen? He is working in us both to will and to act according to His good purpose. Thank God He doesn't give up on anybody. No matter how worse we are, still He begins to work from the inside. The only thing is we need to give place. We need to give God a chance. Amen? In that sense, nobody is perfect. Nobody can say, no, I am better than somebody else. <laughs> or oh, I am worse than everybody. Nobody can say because he is the one who is working in us both to will and to act according to his good purpose. If you see any goodness in me, it is because of the work God has done. Amen? If you find some strength in me, it is because of the work of God in my life. Amen? I told you, you know, everyone is tempted. Alright? We are all tempted in different ways, <coughs> depending upon what is your weakness. But not everyone who commits sin. Not everyone commits sin, though all are tempted. Why? It's not because now they don't have weakness. Some people have learned to trust God. Now they hear the focus is dependency on God. How much you can depend upon God, right? Unless you start hating sin, that will always be like a noose, or like a snare in your life. We you follow what I'm talking about. The desires can always be renewed, revived in your life. When you get plugged into those things, when your eyes see those things, when your ears hear those things, it's a matter of time. You go back to the same old sin, like a dog returns to his vomit. You vomit it once, right? Oh, you feel good. Oh, it's out of my body, right? Then after some time, the dog feels, I have to go back and eat the same that I vomited. Hey, you vomited. Never mind, I'm going to eat the same. Always remember, unless you hate sin, 
it can never be flushed out of your system. So also I would like to tell you, you know, ungodly desires, you now do I nurture those desires? How do I nurture those desires? You got to have input. It can come from media, it can from, come from friends uh, or your own imagination, right? So in a different world called a mental world, that's very real. The Lord only knows the thoughts of man, not even Satan, right? He knows our thoughts, everything. So unless, until you bring some kind of sanctification in your thought life, you might have not converted that into action. But thinking is equally important as much the action is, right? You don't have to hate your brother. You don't have to murder your brother. If you hate, God says you are a murderer because you are harboring in your uh, heart grudges, bitterness. God says, I hate that. Why did God say, no, I hate uh, Esau? Why? Because he pursued his brother, stifling all compassion. It's not that Jacob was a, not altogether righteous man. No. But he was not willing to forgive his brother. You follow what I'm talking about? Right? There are things in our lives that will give a reasonable and legitimate hold for Satan to abide in our lives. Demonic forces can just walk into your life, attack your life. It doesn't matter who you are. If there's an open door in your life, the enemy will always walk in. That's why you see some of the greatest giants in the Bible, called by God, anointed by God. You know, they fell, they crashed on. Why? If the enemy knows your weakness, he's going to work, customize his attack on you. He's going to use people, he's going to use situation, right? He will draw you, you know, he will woo you into that kind of atmosphere until you get seduced by those things. Always remember, it's going to be like a, more like an illegitimate of fire with the world. Because the devil knows, so you now you will never do something what you hate. So, He's going to get you. Now, temptation is more like getting you to like what you should not like. When God said, no, when you eat, you, sh- you will surely die. The devil wanted somehow to, you know, bring about another kind of argument or a concept or idea where they start liking what God said you should not eat. It was pleasing to the eye for you. How did that happen? After listening to the words of the devil. So now, now you have to be very careful. Now you start liking some other stuff after listening to the devil. Maybe listening to people. Don't come under the influence of anybody so soon. So early. Discern people, right? Discern. How much I should be friendly with these people. How far I should talk. How far I should spend time. What I have to cut. Do understand, because some of things uh, in their lives will walk into your life. Right? I don't mean to say you hate people. What I'm trying to say is, uh, don't be foolish. Bad company corrupts character. And you have to be very careful about people with whom you work. And day in and day out, uh, meeting the same people over and time again. Right? God is very concerned about you in that area. You can't take any chance. So, I would like to tell you, you know, you have to uproot the ungodly desire. So, how you can do it? Only by learning to like things that God likes. Amen? You follow what I'm talking about? Yes or no? Start liking the things that God likes. How? Delight yourself in the Lord. Psalm 37, 4. Delight yourself in the Lord. And He will give you the desires of your heart. Amen? So when you're going to spend time with the Word, you're going to ask God, Lord, give me the desires. Give me your desires. How do you like it? Desires can be given to you by God Himself as you spend time with the Word. Awesome. When you start liking what God likes, it's going to be fantastic. Otherwise, you'll end up liking things 
the God said it will be death for you. Demonic invasion is going to be possible by having ideas, suggestions and uh, imaginations, speculations uh, which are not from the word of God. They are from the world of darkness. There's an appearance of wisdom, but it is not wisdom at all. Right? I really admire now how the devil went about using the word in a different way. <laughs> right? He could talk and convince Eve. He knew, right? Now he knows. And now you and me, we are not fools. So he has to do some kind of talking. So he's going to bring in ideas and uh, words and, uh, and all the stuff till you are convinced. So till you end up saying that, now I'm going to do because I like doing that. You follow what I'm saying? So you take the complete responsibility for committing sin. A lot of times uh, we commit sin not because we have to, because we want to. Why we want to do that? Because uh, the desires are grown. Hello? Does it make sense? You can't have the desire growing on the inside, but still don't have the desire being gratified. Something like you know, having a baby growing on the inside, you don't want to deliver. It's impossible. What you conceive, that's what you deliver. So most of the attack is on the inside, not on the outside. Watch your ways, watch your ways. That's why Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the lie. Way, truth, and the lie. You see all these three things? The steps of the righteous person are ordered of God. You got to allow God to order your steps. It's more like, you know, as you walk with the Spirit of God, I would like to tell you, you know immediately in your spirit, and as you walk in step with the Spirit every day, your mind is renewed by the Word, and you're spending reasonable time in prayer. You enjoy the communion and the fellowship of the Spirit of God with you. You understand what I'm saying? It's more like a friend. So you're going to take a stand saying that what he doesn't like, I'm not going to like either. Where he doesn't want me to go, I'm not going to be there. You know, a lot of people like to be friends. It doesn't mean that you must give in. Right? You must choose your friends. Yes or no? Friendship doesn't happen. It will be very disastrous. A lot of people, they are destroyed because of wrong friendship. Today, parents are worried so much. And now we kids, uh, they listen to their friends more than dad and mom. So when you have the Spirit of God operating on the inside, you exactly know some of the words you speak, he doesn't like, you know it. Some of the places where you go, you know, you're not enjoying because uh, you find the suffocation in your spirit. You know, the Spirit of God is not happy. The way you spend your time you know, every day, he's not happy. You're wasting your time, maybe. You're not managing your time well, Right? On the inside, you need to have that compass, the divine compass that leads you, that guides you, right? Now, keeping you in alignment with the Spirit of God. When there is a difference, you know exactly, I'm doing something wrong. The Holy Spirit doesn't enjoy what I think, what I say, what I do. I have to change myself. If you learn to be sensitive and adapt yourself to the ways of the Spirit of God, I want to tell you, you're going to grow from strength to strength from glory to glory, from power to power. Amen? It's an art by itself. That's why now Paul says, train yourself to be godly. It's a question of training. How? Who can be trained without being disciplined? When I say being disciplined, it requires certain lifestyle. When I say you know, being disciplined, that means it requires certain belief system. Amen? You got to first train your mind. A lot of time we have a lot of loose ends in our mind, right? Your mind is something you, know, you need to operate, and it's more like an instrument. It's more like a computer, right? You want to install anything in the computer, like any kind of software, you decide, right? You don't want to really, you know, have some other things installed in your computer. You should not, you should not install it in the first place. You know, if you're by mistake you're done, you must delete those things. Yes or no? Your mind is more like that. Your mind is meant to be programmed. 
Why the Bible says, have the mind of Christ, simply means to say that uh, you need to program your mind just like the mind of Christ. Who helps you doing that? The Holy Spirit himself. When you spend time with the word of God, it's going to program your mind, make your mind more like the mind of Christ. So you think exactly like how Christ thinks. Amen? Only in the context the Bible says, do everything in word or deed in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen? WWJD, what does it mean? What would Jesus do? What would Jesus think? I want to tell you, the greatest success in your spiritual life will come initially if you take care of, you know, every day your thought life. Forget about you know, what you say or do. That's the second step. The first thing is, am I thinking correctly about people, about places, about jobs, about leadership? What am I thinking? If he's my friend, and I, do I have good thoughts about him? If I'm moving with an opposite sex, uh, do I have the right kind of thoughts about that person? It doesn't matter who, what, what you call that person as. You follow what I'm saying? You know, to have our thoughts justified in the light of God's word is more important. That's the reason the Bible says, love the Lord with all your heart, with all your mind, with all your strength. How can I love God with all your mind? God can just scan and screen all the thoughts in your mind. He does scan my mind. What goes on in my mind, he knows exactly. He can see it on the screen. Right? You follow what I'm talking about? When he sees that I have good thoughts about him, about people, about relationships, uh, about my work, about my ministry, about all those things, he's very happy. Amen? Hallelujah. It's not that all of us, we are perfect. We all fall short of God's you know, standards somewhere here or there. But we can be educated. Amen? Our problem is not being forgiven or being loved by God. God always loves you. will always forgive, you know, forgive you. The point here is uh, our minds need to be renewed. Unless your minds are renewed, you will never be transformed. Now, how do you say renewed mind? See, how do I know that my mind is renewed by the word of God? Yes, I read the word. But you can read the word, still not your mind being renewed. Because the spirit of God is not working in your life. You can read the Bible like a textbook. It doesn't pay off, right? The only way how you can get the maximum out of the word is by allowing the spirit of God to help you while you read the word. So he takes the word and renews your mind. That means you must be taught by the word. You must be educated by the word. Number two is you must surrender to the word that you read. Word is not for consideration. It's meant for obedience. You can't gamble with the word. God gives you commands, but the devil gives you suggestions. Because God always speaks absolute things. Truth is always absolute. There are no two ways about it. There's no gray area. God doesn't mince words. When he says yes, it is yes. When he says no, it is no. He told them very clearly. When you eat, you will surely die. He never said you may die, you may not die. Please don't do that. Perhaps, no, he said, when you eat, you will surely die. You read the Bible. That's what the Bible says. You shall know the truth, and the truth will set you free. Very powerful. A lot of times when Jesus spoke, he kept saying the same thing. Verily, verily I say unto you. Truly, truly I say unto you. Because he said, oh, what did he say this, those things? Because he meant what I'm saying, I'm doubly sure about what I'm saying. What I'm saying is totally absolute. There are no two ways about it. It is a full stop. It is a command. You must obey. You have to obey. Yes or no? That's why a renewed mind doesn't have any kind of confusion. It has only clarity. It is precisely correct in discerning things. That which is right, that which is wrong, that which is from God, that which is from the devil. The renewed mind is very clear about it. Follow what I'm saying. Right? A renewed mind will reject sin. It cannot take sin. It doesn't enjoy sin. You need to have the right kind of atmosphere in your life in order to grow spiritually. It is very, very important. Surround yourself with godly people. Amen? Be taught by the word of God. The devil can come with a lot of temptations, but he will not like it. 
When you don't like it, you have no connection. Amen? Jesus was hungry. The devil knew what he wanted. Right? So he came and said, turn the bread, uh, stones into bread. What did he say? Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes out of the mouth of God. What he was trying to say, I may be in need, but still I don't have to go to the devil. I must trust God. I must believe in God. Right? It's not a want. It was a need. You follow what I'm saying? Sometimes when you are in desperate need, the devil likes to bring suggestions in your life. It may be any need in your life. Why not do this? Why not try this? But you have to be very careful whether you are listening to God or you are listening to the devil. Some people focus on only their needs being met. You are done. You have to trust God. You have to depend upon God to have your needs met. Now, how do you define temptation? Temptation is nothing but having your godly needs met in an ungodly way. Right? That means all the desires you have, it was given to you by God, right? But what the devil says, you know, don't wait upon God. You don't have to wait upon God. Come to me. I'll give instant gratification. Yes or no? Somewhere I read, no, sex is for husband and wife, not between a man and woman. The world will never say that. Sex is for husband and wife. Not for man and woman. But the devil say today the attack on the families you see. Now people don't want to get even married. All they want is a man or a woman. You understand what I'm saying? People don't have the respect for a nuclear family nowadays. Not necessarily it has to be a boy. A boy can love a boy, a girl can love a girl. What matters the most is only love. It doesn't matter whom you love. Where the hell it came from? Yes, it came from hell only. It's not written in the Bible, right? So the devil would like to offer a lot of things in terms of suggestions to meet every need in your life in an ungodly way. That is temptation. And he will make it available. But God teaches you and me that we have to trust God in every situation to have needs met. The Bible says, our God will supply all your needs according to His riches and glories in Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen? My need is not something. My need is Him. He said, now what you need is the bread. But what Jesus said, hey, you got me wrong. My need is not the bread. My need is the word. Man shall not live by bread alone. There's something more important than bread. What is that? It is the word of God. So I need the word. So I have the word. Without bread I can live, but not without the word. I shall live by every word that comes out of the mouth of God. How do you like it? Sometimes you do not know what is your need. You listen to the devil, go for something wrong, choose something wrong, do something wrong. Right? Invest on something wrong, make foolish decisions and reap the consequences forever. Always remember, your need is God. It's not something. Right? I need God who can meet my needs. Amen? The Lord is my shepherd and He's my everything. He knows what I need. He'll take me to the right place. He'll connect right people to me. He'll give me everything that I need at the right time. How tricky the devil is. I want to tell you, it's very subtle. Anything that comes from the kingdom of darkness, it has, the, it has an appearance of wisdom, but it is not really wisdom. Some of the brilliant minds in the world today, they can never ever find God. Why? They are atheists. Why? Because the world through its wisdom can never find God. So always I would like to tell you, now be smart. Go for the wisdom of the spirit. What you and I we need is the spirit of wisdom, not just wisdom. So let's pray to God now saying, Lord, give me the godly desires. As you spend time with the word, you need to pray to God saying, Lord, give me the desires. Give me the desires of your heart. Delight yourself in the Lord and he will give you the desire. He will fulfill the desires of your heart. What the righteous desires will be granted because it came from God. 
Amen. Those desires are cultivated in your life, nurtured in your life, nourished in your life by the Holy Spirit. Amen. Walking with God is fantastic. It's amazing. Nothing can ever be compensated. You're going to be a winner the moment you start thinking like God, trusting God. Amen. Till heaven intervenes, uh, I'm going to be quiet. If the heaven is silent, I'm going to be rejoicing. If God is about to do something in my life, I don't have to know about it. Amen. I have to only trust and believe. Everything works together for the good of those who love Him. Amen. Only when you say to God, oh, no, I have to make it happening. It should happen. It should happen. When you become desperate for something, the devil knows. He can just take you. When he knows that you need God more than anything else in the world, he has nothing to really control your life. Amen? So I pray that now God will help me, help you to uproot the wrong desires in our lives. So a desire that stayed with you for years, maybe from childhood, it's going to be a little tough and difficult to uproot them. But I believe the work of the Spirit of God with the Word, and now applying the Word in your mind, and now thinking the Word in your mind, right? The more and more you're going to meditate the Word, more and more, it's going to help you to uproot all those things, right? Uproot means it'll go into the depth, right? The Word is living and active. It penetrates to the dividing of soul, spirit, Matters and joints, it judges the thoughts and attitudes of your heart. It's going to just uproot everything completely. Nothing will be left behind. And God's going to give you new desires. Amen? And hate everything which is, which is from the world of darkness. Every worldly desire you will start hating. Every godly desire you will cherish. So when I conclude, I would like to tell you something. Make sure that you have no desire within yourself which is not of God that you keep liking. You may ask God for forgiveness, you may repent, but I want to tell you, like a dog returned to, to its vomit, will always go back. The devil is always going to use that to connect you to himself. And that will be a limiting factor in your life for a lifetime. That will neutralize a lot of things that God uh, wants to release in your life. You follow what I'm saying? Yes, unless until you uproot that completely, dealing with it ruthlessly by the word of God, by the help of the Holy Spirit. You know that it's out of your system. It is fleshed out. Where you say that, now, in my weakness, his strength is fully supplied. His power is fully supplied. How? Because I learned to trust God. Amen? So ultimately what's going to happen, you allow God to work in that area, your weakness, actually the area of your weakness, will become strong in your life. Amen? Where you fall time and again, that same area, you're going, to build, you're going to be built up stronger than ever before. You find a lot of strength to say no to the devil, to, to say no to sin. Nothing will ever appeal to you again. The same thing the devil used against you in the past. He cannot use it once again in your life because you are built up, you are changed, you are transformed, your mind is renewed. Amen? Praise the Lord. Let's pray. Father, we want to thank you, God, this beautiful hour. Help us to cultivate godly desire. Uproot all the ungodly desires out of our system. We will hate everything God hates. We will like everything God likes. I commit all of us in your mighty hands. Lord, help us to walk with you. In the mighty name of Yeshua Amashia, we pray. Everybody say, Amen. God bless you. Amen.